If you're a visual artist and are looking for a way to publish your work as an augmented reality experience that anyone could see from anywhere for free, then stay tuned. Hi, I'm Alexis Mercedes. I'm the project manager for Fractal Labs. Our YouTube channel is primarily searching through the different applications of the OVR augmented reality app. It is free to use. In order to publish your own experiences, you will need to spend a little bit of dough. There are other videos in the past that I've done that will show you how to do that. This video starts from the perspective that you already have a land that you can publish on. And I'll link the previous video below on how to buy the land in case that is something that you want to do. Um, but yeah, it's free for anybody that you're showing it to. Like they, they can download the OVR app and view it free of cost to them. And you can even link it back to your website or a specific page of a online store or anything you'd like. So we're gonna show you what happened when we did that for ourselves here at Fractal Labs and let's hop in. So this is Dina and Austin. They live on this 40 acre space in Arizona. And this is the inspiration for the art collection that we created. The objective was to create a series of NFTs that are, are inspired by this place and that are created through detailed collaboration and from a very collaborative process. And I wanted to include this footage so you could see what it looks like. They call this space Hedgehog Hill. We started with a series of 10 photographs taken on Hedgehog Hill to use as the basis of what the NFTs would be. Here are the 10 photographs that we ultimately selected to be used. Next, we hired 10 different artists to recreate the photographs, le leaving to them their own interpretation of Desert Dream. And here are the images they created. Once we have our artwork, we can publish these pieces on OpenSea. OpenSea turns your artwork into NFTs and is fairly affordable. All in all, it costs us around 50 US dollars and those costs incurred were solely for gas fees to create a wallet and then to hook that wallet up to OpenSea itself. So that's really just a one-time cost. And then adding each individual art piece isn't additional fees for us because we chose the option of having the minting happen at the time of purchase so that it becomes part of the price of the artwork rather than an upfront price that, that we're paying as publishers. Next, we wanted to make sure that anyone could see the art from wherever they were in a gallery setting. So we leaned on the Over app. The OVR builder is free to use. And even if you didn't own land, you could still create these experiences. It's just a little trickier to be able to share them. But I'll show you exactly how I built it. So I chose 
an existing gallery, not because I wanted to use their gallery, but because that way the scale and everything is already thought through and already done. So I wouldn't have to worry uh, or figure that part out. I just wanted to use it as a placeholder for where my art was gonna eventually go and kind of play around with things. The design tools take some getting used to but they are pretty intuitive there is a built-in tutorial but i haven't found it to be very useful it's really short and simple and i think it's kind of just a placeholder for something that they'd like to do later on comment below if you, if you would like a dedicated video just on using this app in general i just want to delete everything that's kind of in the way i don't like that there's this big building around the gallery because then it doesn't feel augmented in anymore. It feels just like virtual reality. So I want people to be able to see our art in their own space, in their own reality, and have it be part of augmented reality instead of virtual reality. So I got rid of a lot. Now I did get really hung up when I tried to load my NFTs from the NFT section in the app, even though it can see them, they load. I just can't add them to the experience. So I was really bummed out about that and eventually try to work around what I'll show you later. But uh, first I wanted to test some other things. This image with the it almost looks like a face made out of basic colors that's what it looks like to me if you see that it's game over and it's not thinking anymore i added an element from the provided list called a collider or link and Wherever I place that box, I get to assign a link to a website from there. And in the app, it'll take you there. So when we're feeling good about that and have enough to test out, then I can publish it and see how it's working. I did want to provide for you a step-by-step -step on how to use the Over app from the get-go. So if you've built something or bought land or bought currency, that doesn't necessarily mean you've actually used the app. So here's what you do. Uh, obviously the first step is gonna be to go to the app store and I'm gonna search for OVR and it pops up. It's the first one and I download it. From there, you can pretty much just follow the prompts. It will need access to things like your camera, your location, and your microphone. All of those are built into the functionality of it. So without those things, it doesn't really work. The microphone does allow you to actually talk to other people that are experiencing the same, to talk to the other people who are also using the live experience remotely, but it's just an option. You don't have to talk to them if you don't want to. You can press explore OVR lands if the land you're trying to view is literally physically nearby or search for the land name where the experience is published. There's a flash of a tutorial screen that explains the way you need to hold your phone is facing towards the ground. While it downloads, it's gonna learn where the ground is so that you could do the same experience on the first floor of a building or at the top of the Eiffel Tower because you get to tell it where the ground is. For this first test drive, it's confirmed that that tile is still floating there. It didn't somehow fix itself. And we also see that the link worked and that the scale is correct and the space between everything looks good. So we got the information we need. 
The workaround for the NFTs not loading was to add those images to our assets just as images, as PNG or JPEG, and, and use those. Because we can link those to the OpenSea, there's not any difference in the experience for the viewer if it's loaded from our NFT folder or not. So it's really all the same, and I was happy with this workaround. I added a tree to the center to create a sense of a home base. If I'm in the tree, I know that I'm in the center of the experience and the other items surround it. And when I walk away from the tree, if I can't see the other NFTs from where I'm standing, I can use that tree as a guide. Okay, that's the center. And it's, you know, I played around with the size and whatnot. So we'll see how it looks. I pulled up OpenSea side by side with the OVR SD, Builder SDK so that I can quickly get in between the links for each NFT and the collider box assigned to each image so that they would attach to the correct places. Here you can watch me add the links to the OpenSea pages in a broken down sort of way so you can see exactly how I did it. After publishing it to the land once again, it was time to test it out. As you can see from this footage, it worked. Each of the images click to their perspective, web pages. So not only can you view the gallery and experience it in this immersive way that comes to wherever you are, turning wherever you're standing into a gallery, it'll also link you to the online store, which is just not something a computer can do. You know, this is, this is augmented reality in a really good use case. I was sad that my NFTs wouldn't load directly from the assets list. It really seemed like it would, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. I do know that OVR is using Polygon these days, and that in OpenSea, our NFTs are on the Ethereum blockchain. So it might just be, it's a blockchain issue. They're not loading both out there we're gonna try to make it you know cross-platform functional so even that seems like a mistake on their part not me using it incorrectly that's my perception of this um, but hopefully they'll fix that soon and if not it really doesn't matter because it's the same files it's not worse to be using the jpegs here because they link to the same place anyway love how easy it is to use and as far as anything in the crypto world goes this is darn near free in 2022 it's about 50 dollars to set up your account with ovr and buy your first publishable land and it's about 50 dollars to set up the account with OpenSea. nearly all of that price is just the gas prices involved so between the two you're coming in under $100 and each additional thing is much cheaper after that. So it's a very affordable way as far, far as cryptocurrency or anything Web3 user generated content goes. So I'm super happy with the accessibility and I do think that that builder is super intuitive. I didn't even feel the need to narrate what I was doing because it's like 
click and move it up, you know, like click and turn it. Um, it just, it does take some getting used to. If you're interested, I'll definitely make a video that deep dives into just using that builder tool. So let me know. How many galleries could we put next to each other? How far or big could these galleries go? Could I have an entire museum published on just one hex? If we're going to create these files in a way that allows you to have ownership of a place, can we, in the name of making Web3 a better place, deliver a large portion of that ownership to people who are indigenous to that land. It's not a form of reparation, but if we are going to treat this as a more equitable realm, if crypto is going to save the world the way people talk about it, then these are the kinds of steps that are important. I think our gallery turned out pretty cool.